Hi everybody, Niklas Seidloff here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can develop and debug OpenWhisk functions locally. Apache OpenWhisk is an open source serverless platform. You can develop functions in various languages, for example, Node.js or Python. Additionally, you can build functions via Docker containers in other languages like Java. Functions are typically run in the cloud. In order to develop and debug them locally, I've open sourced some samples how you can debug Node.js functions via Visual Studio Code. Let me demonstrate now how to debug single file functions, multi file functions that have been zipped, as well as functions developed via Node.js and Docker. Okay, here's the simplest possible function. It is executed synchronously and it returns the input parameters. You can set the input parameters by your a separate file called payload.json. And the other thing that is important to note here is that you need this additional line. You don't need that to run and invoke the action, but you need it if you want to debug it. So let's set a debug point, for example, here in line four. And now I can switch to the debug page, go to the combo box, select the file I want to invoke, in this case, function.js, and launch the debugger. And as expected, it stops right here. I can now use all the usual debug functionality, for example, step over and continue. And you will find the output here in the debug console. Now, this was an example for a synchronous function. There were other samples for asynchronous functions. In this case, um, it returns some data and the function is successful. We invoke here the callback resolve. And similarly, there's another one that returns an error by invoking reject and by providing some, some error message. Now, at the beginning here in the line one of this function, you can see how to require NPM modules, OpenWhisk in this example. This works for all NPM modules that come out of the box with OpenWhisk. If you want any other NPM modules, you need to use a feature called zipped functions. Let's take a look at an, another example here. In this case, I require the NPM module string to stream, which does not come out of the box with OpenWhisk. And in order to use it, you need to install it by your NPM install, and then you can zip up all the files and send them to OpenWhisk. The debugging works exactly as before. The debugging features that I've shown so far used my local Node.js runtime to run the JavaScript code. This is very easy to do, but it doesn't provide the exact same runtime that runs the functions in production. A better approach is to use Docker containers, since these containers are the same containers that will be run in the cloud. Here's another simple sample. I've implemented here a little web application with two REST endpoints in it and run. I'm using here the Node.js framework express. And to keep it as simple as possible, the run function only echoes the input. Now let's take a look at the Docker file. The Docker file is very simple as well. I extend here the node slim image and then all code, um, including the dependencies, um, is copied onto the image. And in the last step here, the port 8080 is exposed. Now this Docker file is the exact same one that is used both locally and um, later on the cloud. Now the second file here, Docker Compose, is only used locally. And here you can see that the debug port is also opened. So now that we have done that, let's actually debug. So I have here um, a debug point already in my line 16. And let me increase here the size of the terminal. This is the first terminal where I start a Docker via Docker Compose up. Okay, and as you can see, my application is up and running here on port 8080. Now, in order to start the debugger, I need to go back to the debug view, um, select here function in container and start the debugger. And then um, in the last step, I need to switch to a second terminal and evoke another command called node run docker function .js. And when I do that, you can see that the debugger stopped here in my line 16 and I can go ahead and step over and continue as previously. And here's the output in my second terminal, the um, echo message. Now, the coolest feature is that I can even change this code here without having to restart the container. So when I change something here, let's say echo demo, and I save the file, 
and I go back to the terminal and I invoke the command node run docker function again, the debugger stops and when I continue, it actually returns the new um, echo message, including my change. And this works because another node tool is used called node mon. And this tool listens to all file changes in my IDE. And if there are file changes, it restarts the node runtime within my Docker container without again having to restart the Docker container itself. And that's pretty much everything that I wanted to cover today. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.